Coming up, shepherding bears from danger to safety. Motivating kids while resisting temptation. And chasing birds for a living. When bears go looking for food where humans live, their days become numbered. It's only a matter of time before they're killed. In Montana, a bear biologist has found a solution, Karelian bear dogs. Hi, Tessa. Come on. Come on, good boy. Good. Come on, let's go. Meet Tuffy, leader of the pack, and Carrie Hunt. I've been a bear biologist for almost 25 years, and I got tired of seeing bears die after getting into trouble, learning poor behaviors that brought them into conflict with people, and I decided there must be a better alternative than relocation or destruction of bears. In Finland and Russia, Karelian bear dogs were originally used for hunting large animals. They're intelligent, bold, and fearless. Let's go. Carrie relies on the keen noses of Tuffy and his crew to track the bears so she can save their lives. Tuffy brings his long-term experience to the team. Tuffy, Carrie, and the crew are headed up to Alberta to monitor bear activity and to train young Karelian bear dogs Carrie's bear shepherding techniques. Let's go to Canada. Let's go to Canada. Load up. Up, 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 up. Good boy. The Canadian Rockies are bear country. Tuffy's job is to teach his Canadian cousins, Kuma and Mika, how Carrie's bear shepherding techniques work. A great right. opportunity to train, so right. if you guys are ready to go, we can right. get at her. Yep, we are. We just got to put harnesses on, so okay. we'll get great. going here. Okay, guys. All right. Tuffy and his team don't waste any time to start training the new recruits. A frozen bear carcass is used so the dogs have a bear scent to track. This technique allows the dogs to track a real bear scent in a controlled situation. Karelian bear dogs don't make good pets. They like to run, to hunt, and to bark. It's taken Carrie thousands of hours of training to keep the dogs at her side. For the second training exercise, the bear carcass is hidden, and the dogs have to sniff it out. The bear shepherding program is new to Canada. Kirk Ochoi is in charge. Our pups right now are seven months of age and up until this point in time, have never really had a chance to see what an adult dog does around a bear. We've had them around bears on their own, but they had a little lack of confidence for better words because they don't really know what they're supposed to do. They have the instinct, but they don't have the, you know, the final touches. What the last couple of days and training with the adult dogs has done for us and for the dogs is develop their confidence to show them what they're capable of, of doing. And it's very important in, in developing that, the instincts to the fullest that these dogs naturally have. Good find, good find, good doggers. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that the young dogs learn from the old dogs. And the training exercises that we're doing now are allowing these young dogs to learn how to work with the pack. They're watching our big dogs bark and be aggressive and just charge after the bear. And it cuts your training time in half. I feel that by the time we leave, these pups will have come quite a ways in learning how to work with the pack. Tuffy, Carrie, and the team have only been training with the Canadian dogs for three days, but already they're being put to the test. A hungry bear has wandered into people territory. This will be a good opportunity for Tuffy to teach the puppies how to behave in the presence of a live bear. First, the bear must be sedated. 
As the rangers take care of this, Tuffy and his team wait. The bear's eyes are covered to reduce its stress and to help keep it calm. It's measured and tagged in order to identify it should it be caught again. Then the dogs are brought to the bear in pairs. As the lead dog, Tuffy is brought up first, along with Mika, his young cousin. Good find, Tuffy, good find. Bring him around, let him smell the rear end. That helps a lot. All right. Good, good. This is Mika's first encounter with a live bear. And Kirk uses food to get him in close. Okay, leave it, leave it. <laughs> Tomorrow, once the sedative is fully worn off, the bear will be released at another location. What do you think, old man? Huh? You did a good job teaching the kids today. Yes, you did. You showed them. We're partners. You got a big responsibility, don't you? You got to teach all the big, the big pups so that they can follow in your path and keep teaching bears. Yeah. Look what you've started, big guy. You're saving bears because you're teaching them. Hmm. You got a great bark. You took you up, up right where your mom left off. I don't know what I'd do without you, bud. The bear is now fully awake and anxious to get as far away as possible. Carrie's method is to make the bear's contact with humans terrifying, so it will forever associate humans with fear. I believe that the methods that we're using work because we're using animal to animal communication and bears already work among themselves with this kind of communication. And so it's a beautiful way of speaking to the bears through the dogs and in a way that they understand naturally. Rubber bullets and Tuffy's posse of Karelian bear dogs scare the bear far, far away. Good boy. Get out of here! Oh, oh, God. The things we're doing with this program have never been done anywhere. And initially, people think when they hear, oh, they're chasing bears with dogs, gosh, that's pretty hard on them. But the truth is, the bears are dead if we can't turn their behaviors around. And this is an alternative that has never been provided for bears before. And Alberta, in choosing to try to develop the, a team here, has really taken a big step in moving forward in bear management and looking at new alternatives, new ways to allow humans and bears to coexist. Thanks to Tuffy and the other Karelian bear dogs, we have an opportunity here to fundamentally change how bear management is done in this part of the province. And I think there's an opportunity here to save a lot of bears that otherwise would have had to been relocated or destroyed. This is history in the making. Go get the paper. Lulu 
Sue's morning is off to a bit of a sleepy start, but she's just catching a bit more shut-eye before her day really begins. Peluma, let's go. This four-year-old golden retriever works at Petals, a preschool that includes children with special needs. I have um, a total of about 12 children here. Um, a lot of the children we have here are children that got kicked out of a preschool because of behavioral issues. The children come here and we work with the families, with the children, with Lulu to help eventually get a diagnosis and find out exactly what is going on. Our goal is to try and have um, the most normal situation that we can for the children to grow up in. Tell me, can Lulu jump through the hoop down low? No. no. Do you think she can jump up high? No. no. Yes or no? Up high? No. Lulu has a variety of roles at the school. Anything from helping the children understand concepts such as through, high, and low, to providing comic relief. Lulu helps autistic children like Christopher draw circles by giving them added motivation. Give Lulu kisses first. Oh, Lulu's a good helper, huh? But first and foremost, she's there to offer okay. unconditional love and encouragement to kids who need it. When we got Lulu, everything changed. Everything just became much more calm and more serene in the classroom. And I think a lot has to do with the fact that the children has tremendous respect for her. Um, in the beginning, for example, they were used to being loud and boisterous and all over the place. And all of a sudden, Lulu was sleeping in the middle of the room on the carpet. And the kids would just tiptoe past her. And they would keep telling each other, now don't wake her up, OK? And it just brought a tremendous amount of tranquility into our classroom that we didn't have before. Of all the children, Lulu has had the biggest impact on Christopher, who's autistic. Good girl. Thank you. Lulu was trained by Canine Companions for Independence, where she learned to resist temptation, which comes in handy every day at Petals. Well, I think her temperament is very much golden retriever, you know, very sometimes hyper and sometimes really happy and excitable, and then also sometimes very calm. Um, she's a cross between a golden lab and a golden retriever. I think this dog was born for this job. It was interesting when I talked with her trainer at CCI, she said to me, Julie, I saw Lulu one day with children when she was still in training, where she just sprung to life. Lulu adapts her behavior to each child. She'll resist with Jessica, but give in to James, an autistic child. She senses what, you know, when she needs to let go and when she needs to hang on to the ball. And I mean, to us, this was the most amazing thing. We couldn't believe it when we saw it because that's not something you can really teach a dog. The dog either has the sense of that or they don't. Lulu helps each Petals child individually. Emily is tactile defensive. She's afraid to touch different textures. She's a good dog. Very good dog, huh? You want to give her hugs? Come give hugs, in. Give hugs. Give hugs. Yes. I think the reason why the children respond so well to her is they don't see her as a threat. They see her as an ally in everything that they do. Let's see if Lulu give you, give Lulu kisses. Come, Lulu. Did you like that kiss? One more time, kiss, kiss. Oh, very nice. With Lulu's help, Emily has made remarkable progress. Dance, dance, dance. Lulu's calming presence has not only helped the children, but Julie herself. 
About two years ago, just before we got Lulu, we were really at the lowest point that we could possibly be in, in this business. Um, we were having a lot of problems with payment issues with parents in the state. Um, we were having a lot of issues around Christopher at the time. And it was just getting so stressful that my husband and I continually started talking about maybe we should just give it up. And right at that time, I got involved with CCI and I got the dog and it just completely changed my perspective, you know. It's almost as if I was given a second chance, you know, to try and work at it. And it really gave Christopher a second chance. All the interventions we tried didn't work. Um, nothing his mom tried worked. All the professionals that entered into his life didn't work. And then Lulu came and that worked. You know, it was, it's the Lulu factor. <laughs> You no, know, I think that um, Christopher has been touched by a guardian angel through Lulu, most definitely. Um, I, again, I think that um, Lulu provides unconditional love. She requires no demands of Christopher and just provides that unconditional love and guidance to, to him. Every day after work, Lulu and Julie unwind with a walk. Yeah, Mama. Come give. That's it. It's like she's the first thing I think about in the morning and the last thing I talk about at night. And it's, I cannot believe how a, an animal can come into a person's life and just totally possess that person. <laughs> to me, this is just an unreal thing. At the Port Angeles Coast Guard base, everyone stands at attention for the daily color ceremony. But some base personnel, like Wiley, just can't wait until the end to start work. Lieutenant Marshall Branch is one of Wiley's biggest fans. Wiley fulfills a very important role for us. His main goal is to uh, basically chase birds all day. The air station is on Eda's Hook, a magnet for birds. It's an isthmus of land that sticks out four miles into the harbor. It's very dangerous and messy if birds get caught in the helicopter rotors. With four to six rescue missions going out each day, Wiley's job is crucial. Now part of the uh, group Port Angeles, we advise we have a report of approximately 150 birds on the east end of the runway over. Wiley, go again. Wiley is a border collie, with maybe a little Dalmatian in the mix. Like his cousins, he can run up to 50 kilometers or 30 miles an hour. Before Wiley got here, we had a real serious problem. We had anywhere from five to 600 birds uh, during the nesting season that would just sit on the runway. We devoted uh, large amounts of time and money uh, into trying to solve the problem. We tried air cannons. We tried tapes of seagulls that were injured. Uh, hoping that the sound of that would drive the birds away, and nothing seemed to work at all. Finally, we found uh, an article uh, about a border collie at an airport that had been used to drive the birds away. We searched uh, through Border Collie Rescue, a uh, program designed to take care of uh, dogs who don't have homes, uh, who have been abused in the past, and they're trying to place them, and we were able to find uh, this dog who had uh, been to several different homes, bounced around, so they brought him by, and sure enough, as soon as he got out of the truck, he started tearing off after the birds. So it was a perfect match for us. We were able to get a dog that was able to do the job, and uh, we were able to do him a service as well by keeping him away from the pound and providing him with a very happy home. Because Wiley is so good at his job, birds don't flock to the base like they once used to. 
So Wiley's got plenty of free time to make his rounds and visit his friends. Wiley has free room at this base. Um, every office that we've been into you saw has a, uh, a, either a dish of treats or something that they can hand to Wiley. Everyone knows that he walks around. He can go in any building. Uh, the exchange that we have on base uh, has a water dish and uh, treats waiting for him. They all greet him when he comes in the door. He can just walk around the store. Uh, the administration building and the operations building, everyone knows him. Everybody uh, greets him when he comes in. He even has a uh, secret clearance to access spaces that a lot of other people can't. And uh, he can go into the operations center with us and help to plan search and rescue missions. If Wiley had a rank, he would definitely be the uh, uh, commanding officer because he has free reign to go wherever he pleases. Uh, everyone pays him a fair amount of respect. Uh, pretty much when he wants something, he gets it. So uh, he's definitely carrying a pretty senior rank. And I think that's just people because people enjoy having him around and they respect what he's doing here. Wiley, what are you doing in here? We gotta go flying. It's the end of the day, and most of the base personnel are heading home. But this is Wiley's home, and he spends his evenings keeping the night shift company. He definitely provides a, a, a dual mission for us. Uh, we got him to chase the birds. That was, his, that was the reason for us bringing him here. But uh, we've been very fortunate in the fact that his disposition is so friendly and he enjoys being with people so much that he's really endeared himself to the entire crew of this base. Wiley, a bird chaser with his own set of wings. <laughs> 